So here's another bucket hat tutorial. It's a granny square bucket hat and it comes in any color combination that you want. This is how it looks like, side to side. And it's currently my favorite bucket hat at the moment because you can literally make any color combo that you like. I like this flower looking granny square and then the top is like circular. I love it. So enjoy this tutorial guys. Here are the materials you will need. You'll need four colors of worsted weight yarn. Basically a weight four yarn and you can get it in any color that you like. Also, you'll need it in about 120 grams each. You really don't need a lot for the colors that you're using. Next would be a 4.25 mm or a 5.0 mm hook. Either or sizes work, a pair of scissors, and yarn needle. So in case you're curious, the yarn brand that I use in this video is Karen One Pound in Soft Sage, Lion Brown Pound of Love in Antique White, loops and thread impeccable yarn in rose pink and gold and I use about one skein each of this yarn here's a video of the yarn it's an acrylic yarn you can use any brand any type that you like for the stitches that you need to know you need to know magic ring slip knot chain slip stitch single crochet half double crochet double crochet and double crochet cluster and these are all in US terms the first thing we're going to be working on is how to make this granny square. You're going to be making four of these and you can do it in any four color combination. Creating the granny square round one. With this round, I decided to go with a gold color as the center and you're going to start off making a magic ring. Once you make that magic ring, you're going to chain two. And I like to pull on the string to untangle it. After chaining two, this chain two counts as a stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. You're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops again. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops and that's how you create a double crochet cluster make sure you're crocheting this into the circle so you're gonna chain two and then repeat this again so yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over and pull the, the first two loops. With four loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through all four loops. This creates a three double crochet cluster in the circle. You're gonna be repeating the chain two, three double crochet clusters six more times into the circle for a total of eight double crochet clusters. Once you got eight, double crochet clusters in the circle you're gonna pull on that string that loose string and then chain two and slip stitch into the first stitch to join that circle and then chain one and cut off to fasten off and that's your first round now on to round two of this pattern I apologize for how short the rose pink string is on this because it's supposed to show me finishing this round and cutting it off however it was so short and i was playing yarn chicken and i was able to make it through you are going to get your second color and create a slip knot with that second color and you are going to attach it in any chain two space of the previous row
once you've got it attached, chain three, which counts as a stitch, and you are going to create another cluster. So to review, it's yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and yarn over, pull through all three loops. Chain two, and in that same chain space, you're gonna place another cluster. You are going to be repeating this pattern in every chain two space from the previous row, which is chain two, place three double crochet clusters, chain two, and place three double crochet clusters in the same chain space, and then repeat that in the next chain space over. So you have a total of 16 clusters. Once you finish that 16th cluster, you are going to chain two and slip stitch to the first stitch to join this round. And then chain one to cut off and fasten off. Yeah, the string in this round was very short, so I was playing yarn chicken and I was able to make it through. Now onto the third round of the granny square, which is making the square part of this granny square. I chose the color sage green. I just thought it was a pretty border color to put in this. Um, the fourth round is going to be a cream color, but don't mind that right now. So I take my sage green yarn and create a slip knot. And I'm going to attach it in any chain two space from the previous row. Once I've attached this yarn into a chain two space, I chain three. That chain three counts as a stitch. And I am going to be placing two double crochets in the same chain space. This is the start of one corner of the granny square. In the next chain space over, I am going to be placing three half double crochets in that next chain space over. In the next chain space over, I'm going to be placing three single crochets. And in the next chain space over, I am going to be placing three half double crochets. And in the next chain space over, I am going to be creating a corner. So I am going to be placing three double crochets, chain two, and place three double crochets in that same chain space. And this is how you create a corner for the granny square. And you work on the next side of the square. You are going to be repeating this pattern all around. So when you're making the sides, you are going to be placing three half double crochets, three single crochets, three half double crochets in each chain space. And to make a corner, you are going to be doing three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets in that same chain space corner. Once you reach the final corner, you are going to be placing three double crochets, chain two, and slip stitch to the first stitch to join. And then chain one and cut off to fasten off. And that's how you create round three of this granny square. It's already a square. So I like to create a border for this. So on to round four, which is the border. And this is your fourth color that you are choosing for this granny square. You can choose any color that you like for the border. I chose cream color because I just thought it would complete this color palette and look really pretty it gives me like a vintage vibe anyways so with the cream color i am going to create a slip knot and i am going to attach it to the corner of this granny square which is the chain two corner
in this corner i am going to be chaining one and then place a single crochet and start single crocheting down the side of this granny square and every time i reach a corner i will place a single crochet chain two and another single crochet for the corners and i just repeat this all around For the final corner, all you're going to do is place a single crochet, chain 2, and slip stitch to the first stitch to join, chain 1, and cut off to fasten up. And that is your completed granny square. Once you've created 4 granny squares, we are going to attach the granny squares together. So here are my squares. I've made four of them. This is the back side, which is aka the wrong side, and this is the front side, which is the right side. So you are going to be placing the wrong sides together. And with your cream color or fourth color yarn, you are going to create a slip knot and attach it to both corners of the granny squares. And my method of attaching them together is pretty simple. I just single crochet it across because I like the texture of it. I like to see the single crochet lines creating the ridges. So yeah, just line up the wrong sides together, insert your hook through both of them, and attach your slip knot through it and chain one. You are going to be placing a single crochet in each stitch. So when you line up the two granny squares together, you're going to insert your hook through each stitch and then place a single crochet on top of that. And once you reach the final side, which is just one side of this granny square, you are going to chain one and cut off to fasten off. And you are going to do this to each granny square attaching them like a line and you're not going to be crocheting on any other sides just make sure you attach them all together here's how it looks like when it's attached together as you can see the single crochet is on the outside of this granny square to create texture and you're gonna repeat this with all four but on the fourth one you want to attach that to the first granny square to create like a circle which is just so single crocheting the final ends together and once you've done that chain one after you chain one you're gonna flip it to one side of this granny square circle and place a single crochet on the entire side of this circle and then once you finish that round you're going to slip stitch to the first stitch to join chain one and cut off to fasten off And this is how it should look like with one side only that has single crochet and the other side is just attached and you've created the middle part now on to creating the top of the hat which is a circle of granny square clusters so to do this you should already have the first two rounds with the two different colors from the previous pattern of how to create a granny square uh, I'm not going to go over it again, you can just you know, reverse the video and go back to the first two rounds of the granny square to create this two rounds of color. 
and I am going to teach you how to do the third round, which is in a sage green color that I chose or any color that you want. I'm going to chain three, which counts as a stitch, and place a three double crochet cluster into the same chain space. And then I'm going to chain two and place another three double crochet cluster in the next chain space over. So it's gonna be one cluster per chain space. And you are gonna repeat this all around. You should have a total of 16 double crochet clusters. Once you reach that final 16th cluster, you are going to chain two and slip stitch to the first stitch to join. And then chain one and cut it off to fasten off. Now on to the fourth round, which is a cream color that I chose. You are going to create a slip knot and attach that fourth color into any chain space from the previous row. And you are going to chain three. The chain three counts as a stitch. You are going to be placing a three double crochet cluster into the same space. Chain two and place a three double crochet cluster into the same chain space. So it's two three double crochet clusters in the same chain space. And you are going to repeat this all around. So you have a total of about 32 double crochet clusters. Once you reach that final cluster, just chain two and slip stitch to the first stitch to join. And that is how you create this top part of this hat. It has four colors. You can do it any color combination that you like. Now we are going to be attaching the top of the hat to the squares that you just made. So on the side that has the single crochets, you're not gonna be crocheting on that side. You are going to be crocheting on the other side that you did not place single crochets on. You're going to line up the squares and place your circle on top of that. So make sure you already have a chain one on your circle that you did not cut off so it's just going to be a continuation of the yarn and you're just going to line it up anywhere you like i like to start on a corner of the granny square and just insert my hook and with the already chain one that you've made with the circle i just pull that through the stitch and then place a single crochet all around to attach this top part of the hat to the squares and you're going to single crochet all around and once you reach the final stitch just slip stitch to join to the first stitch and then chain one to cut it off and fasten off and you're going to weave in any loose ends this is how it should look like the single crochet adds a ridge texture to this hat and we're about halfway there. We already got the top part, the middle part. Now we are going to be working on the brim of the hat, row one. So you're gonna be working on the sides that already have single crochets from what you previously did. So I'm going to take my gold color, or AKA my first color, and attach it to any stitch. So I'm going to chain two, this counts as a stitch, and place two double crochets in the same stitch. And then I'm going to skip two stitches, and in the third stitch, I'm going to be placing three double crochets in that same stitch. You are going to repeat this all around. Once you've reached the final stitch, you're just going to slip stitch it to the first stitch to join, 
chain one and cut it off to fasten off. You can always weave in ends later or you can just do it now if you want to get out of the way. That's what I like to do. Um, and that's just the first round. Now onto creating the brim of the hat row two. So I use my rose pink colored yarn for this row. You can use any color actually. Um, I create a slip knot and attach it in between the three double crochet space. Then I chain three, which counts as a stitch and place two double crochet clusters in the same stitch. And then I chain two and place three double crochet clusters in the same stitch. Then I chain two and skip two stitches. And in the third stitch, place a three double crochet cluster, chain two, and place another three double crochet cluster in the same stitch. Then you're gonna chain two, skip two stitches, and repeat this pattern all around, which is placing three double crochet clusters, chain two, and three double crochet clusters in one stitch. And you're just gonna repeat this all around for the second row of this brim. Once you reach the final stitch, just chain two and slip stitch to join the round. And then chain one and cut it off to fasten off. And that is row two of the brim. Now on to row three of this brim of the hat. I am taking my third color, which is the sage green color, to create this row. You can use any color you want. Anyways, create a slip knot and attach it in between any chain space. Chain three, which counts as a stitch, and place three double crochet clusters in that chain space. Chain one and then place three double crochet clusters in the next chain space. You are going to repeat this in every chain space. Just chain one and then put three double crochet clusters. Once you reach the final cluster of this row, just chain one and slip stitch it to the first stitch to join. And then chain one and cut it off to fasten off. And at this point, you can weave in any ends. If you want to do it the last part of this hat, then okay, but I like to weave it in as I go. And that is the third row. Now onto the fourth and final row of this brim. This is a hint of how it looks like the final result. But anyways, um, I take my fourth color, which is my cream color, and create a slip knot, and I attach it to any stitch. So I just chain one, and then just place a single crochet all around. And once I reach my final stitch, I just slip stitch it to the first stitch to join and then chain one and cut off a long tail to fasten off. So to fasten off, I just use my plastic yarn needle, flip my hat inside out and just weave in any ends or any loose strings that I see. I use either my crochet hook if the string is really short or my yarn needle if the string's long and just try to hide it. And once I have any like loose ends or string, I just cut it off with a scissor. Yeah! Now on to the final results. Your hat should be looking like this. I created two colors. I mean two types of hats with different color palettes and I really love the burgundy one and the sage green one's also cute. I just like both of these. I am pretty excited about this pattern and can't wait for you guys to try it out this is how it looks like when worn ah, i'm excited it's so pretty it's so gorgeous i can't wait to wear this out it reminds me of spring i'm also excited because i will be taking orders on this bucket hat i'll be providing yarn colors that i have in stock for you guys to choose from to create your own color combinations I'm excited to see people recreate this in their own color combinations and I can't wait to make this in like a million different color palettes.
I also like this color too, so I don't know, like, I'm gonna be choosing between these two to go out and wear. I hope you guys like this tutorial. See you guys in the next one. Please like and subscribe. Love you guys. Bye.